All right, hello again. So basically your goals for today, if you haven't done the quiz, you probably want to do that. If you got it and you weren't happy with your school score, feel free to contact me, you can retake it. That's certainly fine. If you wanna retake it a couple times, that's okay with me. Okay, so once you've done your quiz, we are going to talk about a little bit of graphing today. So we'll do some examples, then you'll have a short little assignment as well. All right, so we're gonna talk about rational functions and how to graph them. So that's when we're dividing polynomials. And our most basic function, sort of the nicest or easiest rational function is just one divided by x. And the graph of this thing is called a hyperbola. So it's a special type of curve and it's actually a curve that's split into two curves. Hmm. So a hyperbola usually has sort of two pieces. And the reason there's two separate pieces is because they're divided by a line that the graph never touches but gets really close to that we call an asymptote. So let's try and graph 1 over x by just plotting points. Even if we have no idea what it looks like, we can always grab a calculator, plug in a whole bunch of points, and hopefully see what our curve will look like. So here I'm just making an x and y chart. Here's x, here's y. If I plug in negative 3, I get negative a third. Plug in negative 2, negative a half. Negative 1, yada yada yada. What happens if I plug in zero? Can I do one divided by zero? Nope, it's impossible. So I'm gonna put does not exist. And I can plug in all these other numbers. All right, so now just plotting points. So I've got negative three, negative a third, negative two, negative a half, negative one, negative one, negative a half, negative two, and I can't plot a point at zero. So it looks like my graph is going something like this. Okay, then I had at a half, I'm at two. Zoom in a little. At a half, I was at two. At one, I was at one. At two, I was at a half. Boom. that up I suppose okay so there's my graph that's what we call a hyperbola and hmm do we see any asymptotes so that's a straight line that the graph gets really close to but doesn't cross it looks like there is a horizontal asymptote and a vertical asymptote which our graph gets really close to those but doesn't actually cross them so the vertical asymptote here is where it's at zero. How do you write the equation of a vertical line? X equals zero. Our horizontal asymptote, it's also at zero, but how do you write the equation of a horizontal line? That's a Y equals equation, Y equals zero. So our hyperbola, it's kind of got two different sections. You can see there's some nice symmetry though. It's just a new type of curve. So sort of like we've graphed parabolas, you've graphed straight lines, we've graphed cubic equations, now we can graph hyperbolas, which are just rational expressions. All right, so basically, here's kind of our general overview of how to graph these things, is we want to get into sort of this standard form here, y equals a over x minus h, plus k, which comparing these to the thing we just graphed, one over x, well, really there's just some transformations here. So this h, well, that's just in with the x, so that's just a translation left or right. So that's just moving our vertical asymptote to the left or to the right. This plus k, that's just our normal translation up and down. So that's just moving our horizontal asymptote up or down. 
Okay, so really how we're gonna graph these things is step one, we're going to draw our two asymptotes, the vertical ones at x equals h, horizontals at y equals k. Then we're gonna make just an xy table, pick a bunch of values, and you probably wanna pick x values that are close to the vertical asymptote. Plug in a bunch of numbers, connect our curves, and we should see our nice hyperbolas. All right, so if you look at this, y is equal to two divided by x minus three and then plus one. So really this minus three just means translate right three and then up one. Well, so for normally our asymptotes are at zero and at zero, this means our vertical asymptote just went right three. So it's at x is equal to three. Our horizontal asymptote, instead of being at y equals zero, it went up one. So it's at y is equal to one. So our asymptotes are at x is equal to three. Ah, uh, that was horrible. And y is equal to one. All right, so now let's just make a little xy table. We're gonna pick a bunch of x values, plug it in, woohoo, then we math. All right, so I do wanna be a little bit smart about the x values I'm picking. I want to make them close to my vertical asymptote so I can see sort of what's happening there. So I'm always just gonna pick my very middle number as the asymptote three, and then pick a couple numbers on each side. So if I try and plug in three, I end up with two divided by zero, which I cannot do, it does not exist. If I plug in a two, I get two divided by negative one plus one, which is negative two plus one gives me negative one. When I plug in negative or plug in a positive one, I end up with two divided by negative two plus one, which ends up as negative one plus one, which is zero. When I plug in a four, I get two over one plus one, which is three. Plug in a five, I get two over two plus one, which is one plus one, which is two. So now to just try and plot all these things, I have the point one, zero. I have the point two, negative one. I have the point four, three and five, two. So here's our points. And remember, since I cannot cross these asymptotes or asymptotes, as some people will pronounce them, we can say, oh, looks like my graph's gonna have to be going in sort of this bottom left section and in this top right section. And there are my hyperbolas. All right, not too bad. As long as we go step by step, I think that we can handle it. Okay, next one, starting off, I just want you to take a second and first just think, where are the asymptotes? Where's the vertical asymptote? Where's the horizontal asymptote? So our vertical asymptote here is just gonna be at negative four. Our horizontal asymptote's at negative three. So let's draw those. So the, whole, or the vertical is at ooh, negative four there. The horizontal one is at negative three. All right, so then step two, let's make a little XY table and pick some smart values. So probably the middle number I'm gonna pick for X is negative four, and then just pick a couple on each side. And you're free to use a calculator to plug it back into your equation up here if you want. I know when I plug in negative four, that does not exist. If I plug in negative 
3, I get 1 minus 3 is negative 2. If I plug in negative 2, I get a half minus 3, which is negative 2.5. If I plug in negative 5, I get negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Plug in negative 6, I get negative 3.5. Nope, 4.5. Sorry about that. And we just plot away. So negative 6, negative 4 and a half. Negative 5, negative 4. And we had negative 3, negative 2 negative 2, negative 2.5. And if I keep in mind that I already pretty much know the shapes I have to draw because they're hyperbolas, and I know I've got my asymptotes, I can see, oh, I'm going to have to look like this and like this. Is my graph absolutely perfect? No, but it's pretty darn good. If I want a perfect graph, what could I do? I could type it into Desmos. So if you want to type these into Desmos, check your solutions. That's probably a pretty smart move, using tools to your advantage. All right, how about, can you pause it here, take a minute, and see how much of this one you can do all by yourself. Graphing y is equal to negative four over x plus two. I'll give you a little hint. The k term is plus zero at the end. Go! All right, so to here we have vertical asymptote at negative two, horizontal asymptote at zero. So I drew those. Now I just need to make a little x, y chart. And who can tell me what's sort of the middle number to plug in for x? That'd be right on our vertical asymptote, negative two. Pick some numbers right around that. And go to town. So if I just plug and chug, if I plug in negative four, I end up with, 2 plus 0 is 2. Plug in negative 3, I end up with 4 plus 0 is 4. If I plug in negative 1, I get negative 4. If I plug in 0, I get negative 2. Okay, so if I plot, I go negative 4, positive 2. Then I had negative 3, positive 4. Now I've got negative 1, negative 4, 0, negative 2. And if you want to pick more points so you can get a little better idea of what the graph looks like, you're certainly free to do that. That's certainly acceptable. So if you picked a few more points, you could see that, oh, here's one of my pieces. And boom, boom, boom. Here's my other piece. So we're actually in slightly different sections this time. So from our asymptotes, we're in sort of the top left and the bottom right pieces. Well, what's a little different this time? Hmm, it's that negative really, that negative up there in our numerator. Really just a little flippage, and so we're in sort of the different pieces or different quadrants of our graph. Neat. Okay, so what if, hmm, if we're not in our nice form. So our nice form for graphing 
is you have a number over x minus h and then plus k. Well, I can have rational equations that are not in that form, and maybe I want to try and get them into that form. Well, I have lots of things we can do. If we have polynomials and a rational expression is just a fraction, we're dividing them. Do we actually have ways to divide polynomials? Yes, indeed. We can do one of two methods. If it's super duper fancy, we can do polynomial long division. If it's nice, we could potentially do our synthetic division. Okay, so let's look at something where our rational function is x plus 5 divided by x minus 2. So what's probably the more efficient way to divide this out, long division or synthetic? Yes, synthetic. So if I synthetically divide, I'm going to use 2 as my critical term. I've got my coefficients, 1 and 5. If I run through my algorithm, bring the 1 down, multiply by 2. So really what this gives us is divided out, this becomes 1, and then wasn't 7 the remainder? Yeah, 7 was the remainder, 7 over x plus 2. So really, this is equivalent to 7 over x plus 2 plus 1. Does that look like our nice graphing form? Sure does, because I can just say, hmm, maybe we're getting good enough at this. My vertical asymptote is where? Boom, negative 2. Where's my horizontal asymptote? Positive 1. So we just say, all right, that's at negative 2. My vertical asymptote, positive 1. For my horizontal one. And now can I just pick some values? Sure. Have that can-do attitude. Don't know why I put negative 0. Same thing. Let me just plug and chug. We just go to town. So if I plug in 0, I get 3.5 plus 1 is 4.5. If I plug in negative 1, I get 8. Plug in negative 3, and you can probably start to see there's going to be some sort of symmetries here. I get negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. Plug in negative 4 get negative 3.5 plus 1 is negative 2.5. Let me just plot, plot, plot away. So we had 0, 4 and a half. Negative 1, h. So that's going to be sort of a fatty. Then we have negative 3, negative 6, and negative 4, negative 2 and a half. So that's also sort of a wider hyperbola, and there we go. Sound good? Maybe, maybe not. That's okay. We can try one more together. All right, if you want to pause it and try it all by yourself, that would be an outstanding move. If not, that's okay. Sort of a modern problem, it requires a modern solution. All right, so I probably want to divide this thing out. So I'm gonna do synthetic division, math, math, math it up. So this really becomes five plus one over x plus one. So really in sort of our graphing form, we get one over x plus one plus five. That tells us Where's my vertical asymptote? Negative 1. Where is my horizontal asymptote? Y equals 5. So I can plot those fairly nicely. Well, my graphing skills are sort of poor today. But that's okay. Do the best you can with what you got. All right, now let me just make a little xy chart. Make our middle number negative 1 here. Plug everything in. 
So when I plug in zero, I get one plus five is six. Plug in one, I get a half plus five is 5.5. I plug in negative two, I get negative a half plus five is 4.5. Nope, it's four. Plug in negative three, you get negative a half plus five, that's 4.5. All right, so we've got 0, 6, 1, 5.5. So, boom, there's that piece. We've got negative 2, 4, negative 3, 4 and a half. So let me see, okay, there's that piece. So do we feel like we can graph hyperbolas? Yeah! Are you ready to try some on your own? Sure! If you get stuck, can you ask me questions? Certainly! All right, feel free, contact me, use the answer key. Uh, you can check with Desmos. It's always a good way to check when you're graphing. And have a good time. Expand your math knowledge.